Hello. We are going to set up a genetics experiment. We are going to be planting some seeds, planting in, parent, in uh, quotes there, planting some seeds from an F1 and an F2 generation for two different characteristics or sets of characteristics. So I'm going to show you in this video how to set up your plates. Let's take a look first at the things I've given you in your Ziploc bag. One thing are four Petri dishes. Hopefully they're not cracked. Second thing is four different envelopes, which are labeled AF1, BF1, AF2, and BF2. And those are representing the F1 and the F2 results, the offspring, those are seeds, from cross A and cross B, and we'll define what those are later in our project. Then you have a baggie that's filled with some round, both filter papers and paper towels. So let me kind of show you that you should have eight circles of paper towel, and then you should have eight, sorry, you should have four circles of a really thick filter paper and then four circles of a much thinner paper towel or, or filter paper, as well as a dropper. Those are the things that are in your baggie. The things that you will need that are not in your baggie, some water. I just filled a beaker with some water. If you just fill a cup with some water, you'll be set. Something that can write on our Petri dishes, like a Sharpie, and then a lamp. You're gonna need some kind of a lamp that you can put as close as possible to your seeds. Either the lamp gets put close to your seeds or your seeds get put close to your lamp by raising your seeds up on, on some books or, or something. So those are the items that we're gonna need. Let's start with our Petri dishes. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna label them. And I'm gonna label the top and the bottom. So I'll have an AF1, AF1, B, F1, B, F2. <laughs> Better keep that a one on both sides there. There we go. A, F2, A, F2. And lastly, a B, F2, and a B, F2. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our filter papers into our Petri dishes. The filter papers are going to go in the lid. The lid is the skinny one whose edges overhang the bottom piece. So you want to use the lid, not the bottom. And in that, you're going to place one of the firm filter papers, one of the flimsy filter papers, and two of the paper towel. So do that for each of your Petri dishes. Once that's done, we're gonna be putting some water in there. So that's step one. So now you have four Petri dishes, each of which is filled at this point with dry paper. There's one thick filter, one thin filter, and two pieces of paper towel. Now we're gonna be wetting each of these we want to add enough water so that things are very, very moist, but not pooling. We don't want to drown our seeds or they won't germinate. So what we want to do is we want to take the bottom off there, the smaller piece. We want to pour water and let it soak in. Let it soak in. It should feel quite wet but it shouldn't really be pooling. It shouldn't be up above, certainly, any edge. And we can just put the other bottom back on. So I'm gonna pour, kind of hold down that paper, pour water in, and really get it soppy wet. You can always add a little more water. It's harder to take water away, so you might wanna start on the less rather than on the greater side of your water. And then my last one here.
as our seeds are germinating, it's super important that they stay damp. And therefore, every day, maybe once in the morning, maybe once in the evening, you just want to check that they're still quite damp. And the purpose of the dropper is so that if you need to add water, which you probably should add a little bit each day, you're just going to use your dropper to add some water to your dish right there. So that's the purpose of the dropper. Now it's time to plant our seeds. So inside the envelope, if you open it up, what you're going to find is a card. And on that card, there's a label. So you can double check that what you says on your Petri dish, it says on the card. So these are my AF1 seeds. And you can see they're small. They're not very big seeds. There they are. And I've put them on the card with tape so that they wouldn't get lost. But getting them off here is going to be a little bit tricky. After I taped some on, I realized that it was easier if I put a handle on the tape, a piece of tape that was folded over. But on the AF1s, there are some of them where I don't have any kind of handle. So I'm going to have to kind of use my fingernail to move that tape to get at the seeds. Now be careful because there's, they're so small and they could have a lot of static electricity that they tend to bounce all over. So I'm taking the tape off very slowly. And then what I'm going to do is take the lid off of my dish here, take my tape, slowly peel it back, and you can see that I'm getting to the seeds. So I'm going to take them with my fingers and I'm going to drop them by spacing them out onto my dish here. You can see me spreading them apart from one another. So I'm kind of handling them one at a time. I'm trying to get all the seeds from that piece of tape. My piece of tape broke. So I'll try to get that one on there and get that last seed on there like so. Okay, I am done with my card. If I can, with my finger, I'm just gonna try to spread the seeds out so they're not on top of one another, and that way I'll be able to judge their phenotype more easily. That's pretty good, once they've started to germinate. So now I'm gonna put the lid on, and this one is ready to put under the lights. Now I'm ready to do the second one. You can double check that I've got BF1 on my dish and BF1 on my envelope, and hopefully BF1 on my seeds. So all the rest of them, once we're past the A's, have a little handle. You can see right here, kind of, everything is really light in color. But I made a little handle so it's easier to get the tape off on these later batches. So I'll take off the lid here slowly because they're gonna jump if that static electricity gets them. And I'm going to take the seeds and start to put them in my dish. Someone's at my door and I have to stop for a second. I'm back from that little interruption. So we're going to take our seeds from the tape slowly you don't want to take too many off at a time in case they drop. Take your seeds, spread them out on your dish. And let's get the land. There are, a f when you get to the F2s, there are a few more. There's around 11 ish seeds for each of the F1s and there are about 14 or so on the F2. So there's a few more. That's it, we got every seed, and then we put our cover on. And now you repeat that with the next two. So that's my distribution of seeds for the A F2 generation. And here's my distribution of seeds on my B F2 generation. Save your cards because they will be useful when we take pictures of our seeds. So when I take a picture, I'm gonna to wanna to take off the bottom and I don't have a label on it anymore. And this way, if I put it next to my card, 
I'll be able to know which seeds these are. So we'll take the lid off when we take a photo. We're gonna try to take a photo once a day. And so it would be a good time to start. Take a photo of each of your Petri dishes for day zero. Our setup is almost complete. The last thing we need is to get our seeds as close as possible to a lamp. So I happen to be lucky in that here at school I have one of these gooseneck lamps. So I'm going to take the lamp and I'm going to put it as close as possible to my seeds. So right now it's about oh, eight inches or so from my seeds. I'm going to put it down as close as possible to my seeds. And that's the setup that I want to leave on continuously. So you may well want to put these someplace where the lamp is not going to keep you awake at night, um, maybe in a den or um, family room someplace, um, maybe your bathroom where you can close the door and um, that light can stay on for the next several days shining on your seed. Each day you'll want to check that your seeds are moist. So you want to use the dropper to add some water onto your seeds. Clearly you're simply going to lift the lid here. You're going to take your dropper and then I would kind of add it around the edge to not disturb the seeds too much. But you're going to add water. You really want to keep the seeds moist. And that's it. Then once a day we'll take a picture and early next week we will evaluate our results. It's quite possible that you don't have a lamp that you can easily bend down to where your seeds are. In that case, you might need to stack your seeds on top of something. So here I've brought some books and you can simply stack your seed petri dishes on top of the books and bring your seeds as close as possible to whatever light source you have. Here's another alternative. If you don't have a stack of books handy around, you could just take a cardboard box. And even if it's a table lamp that you're using, you could kind of put that shade or that box up near where the light bulb is and get your dishes as close as possible by using a box. Any of those should work.